everyone. My name is Si Yu. I'm from Max Planck Institute for Informatics, Germany. And this is a joint work with Misha and Luca and Ben Schiller. The video here shows a typical street crossing scene with many people occluded. So the goal of our work is to detect and track all the people in such crowded street scenes. Here are three example images from the crossing sequence. It is very challenging to detect and track all the people in such scenes, mainly because of occlusions. On the single image, the pedestrian detection becomes very difficult because of significant partial occlusions. And for tracking across the sequence, a certain of number of people are under long-term occlusions even, and the entire, even for the entire sequence, which makes the tracking fail at such cases. And our approach are based on the observations that in such scenes, for example, when people walk side by side across the pedestrian crossing, a large number of people are occluded by another person. So we say the dominant occlusion, occlusion cases are the person-person occlusions, which actually result in a very characteristic patterns and can be explicitly trained and used to detect the presence of two person. Recent approach about um, multiple people tracking in crowded street scenes are based on tracking by detection approach. So basically, they employ the, uh, the pedestrian detector on single image, even though they don't have although they don't have some detections when the people is occluded. Uh, what they did is they include some elaborate strategies to link between, uh, across the occlusion event. And th this strategy requires sufficient visibilities for a certain frame before and after the occlusions. And this doesn't work for the people who is under the occlusion for the entire sequence. So, uh, so, it is, uh, so uh, we say that the successful occluded Person detection is a key solution to, for, uh, for addressing the problem of multiple people tracking in crowded street scenes. State-of-art pedestrian detectors are able to robustly detect the people under different imaging conditions, posts, and viewpoint variations, but fails at strong occlusion levels. And there are already se several approach has been proposed to detect the occluded people with explicit occlus occlusion reasoning. They basically treat the occlusions as distractions or nuisance. And they employ the individual evidence from the individual person, which becomes high, highly unreliable when the person are occluded. And here in our approach, we explore alternative strategies. So we employ the joint evidence of two people and use the characteristic patterns of people, people occluded to train a detector and to detect the presence of two people. And in our work, we use deformable part model as our baseline. And the next question is, what's the performance for DPM for occluded people? How can we quantize it? And in order to do that, we propose MPRI2 people data set. So there are about 900 person-person occlusion images in our data set. Here are three examples. And we categorize all the images by 10 different occlusion levels. And now with this data set, we can explicitly evaluate the detection performance for, uh, for every occlusion levels. And this is the DPM performance on our two people data set. Here we show the equal error rate at, uh, at, different, at each occlusion levels. And you can see when the occlusion level is about 5%, the DPM obtains good performance. And when, when the occlusion level is increased, the DPM performance drops dramatically. And uh, when the occlusion level is about 35% or more, the achieved score is only slightly above 50%, which shows that at most cases, uh, only one of the two people is detected by the DPM. So it is clear that the DPM is uh, se uh, severely challenged by the occlusions. And in order to solve this problem, for the first iteration in our approach, we propose an occlusion-aware double-person detector, which we built based on the DPM approach. And we detect the presence of two people. And at the same time, we predict the bounding box for individual person. And for the second iteration, we propose a joint person detector, which is jointly trained single model to detect a multiple person, the double person as well as a single person. First, I will talk about our double-person detector. So the DPM uh, uses a mixture of components, and uh, they initialize it by, different, uh, by the bounding box aspect ratios. And for the training, they use latent SVM uh, algorithms, and they also do mining for hard negative uh, exa examples. And in the end, they learn linear regression functions for each component to get uh, more precise uh, detections. 
and in full analogy to DPM, our double prison detector also uses a mixture of components. Uh, and each component consists, uh, consist of, consists of root filter, which defines the cost location of two people, and also deformable parts, uh, deformable parts which capture the, re, uh, capture the different uh, uh, respective parts, and also the occlusion pattern of two people. And for the initialization, instead of initialize, uh, depending on the uh, occlu uh, uh, different bounding box aspect ratios, we initialize our components by occlusion levels. This follows by the intuition that the degree of occlusions are the major source of appearance variabilities, and we capture it by different components. We use the standard DPM training alg uh, algorithm, but with larger number of training images because of appearance variabilities of two people. And in the end, by learning two uh, separate linear regression functions for individual person, we can predict the bounding box for both people. And because the uh, var var appearance variability from single person to double person is increased exponentially, and for the training image, we also want to vary background, relative position and scales for two people. So all this means we need a large number of training images. And at the same time, for each training image, we also need accurate occlusion level estimation. So instead of expensively collect and uh, annotate the training images, we choose to generate them. So this is pipeline. We extract the people's silhouette from the annotated person map, and then we combine them to generate the synthetic training image. And all the synthetic training images are categorized by di different occlusion levels. And here I show the examples which we used to train our double person model. The same as single person detector, we quantize the performance of our double person detector on two people data set. And you can see, uh, for the single person detector, it only detected one of the two people. But for our double person detector, we successfully pre de detected the presence of two people, and we also precisely predict the bounding box of, of individual one. And this is the result I showed before, the, uh, the evaluation result for the single person detector. And this is a result for our double person detector. You can see that for all the occlusion levels, our double person detector achieves more than 90% uh, recall, which, clearly, which is clearly a significant improvement over the single person detector. And one interesting observation is that we get the best performance for the intermediate occlusion levels. And actually, the intermediate occlusion levels uh, present the most uh, discriminative occlusion patterns. And this shows that the person-person occlusion patterns is powerful and can help the detect of, uh, the, detect of the presence of two people. Until now, I have showed that the double person detector outperforms single person detector by a large margin on our two people data set. Well, this data set is ideal for quantizing the performance of detection uh, of occluded people, but it is rather idealistic because in the in the crowded street scenes, we have a single person who is fully visible. We, we also have two and more people who occlude each other. So for the second uh, iteration, we propose a joint person detector, which is a joint trained single model to, de to detect all the persons in the scenes. And uh, as, as I explained before, the single person detector and the double person detector use a mixture of component. And now for the joint person detector, we combine all the components from the two detectors and joint train them to a single model. So when there is a single person on the, uh, on the test image, one of the single person component fire and predict single bounding box for this, for this person. And when there are person pair on the test image, one of the double person component fire and predict two bounding box on this image. And in details, we, initial, we initialize the single person component by bounding box aspect ratios and the double person com component by the occlusion levels. And we use the latent SVM training algorithm for the joint training, but the training images are slightly different. So for the uh, synthetic training images, which is less than 5% occlusion levels, we resign them from the double person component to single person component. Because the single person detector already achieve uh, a good performance for this kind of occlusion levels. And bounding box prediction now is component dependent, as we showed here. 
And now maximal suppression now is more complicated than the standard DPM approach because we have the bounding box predictions from two type of detections. So we propose two steps of non-maximal suppression, which is before and after the bounding box prediction. Here I will show examples how our uh, two-level non-maximal suppression helps the detection of occluded people. So until now, our joint person detector can detect single person as well as, as well as person pairs, and how about three and more people who occlude each other. So for the first level of non-maximal suppress suppression, which is before the bounding box prediction, the, uh, the detections from the double person component and from the single person component can compete each other and suppress each other according to the respective score. And after the non-maximal suppre suppression, we have the second level of non-maximal suppre uh, non suppression. And for the bounding boxes predicted from the same double person component, we prevent them from uh, suppress each other. But for the bounding boxes uh, predicted from the same type of detections, they can suppress each other and uh, according to the respective score. So now we can correctly detect a, a three person on this image. We begin our analysis with a TOD pedestrian data set. In this data set, there are about 300 uh, fully visible people. And our joint per, uh, person detector outperforms the single person detector. Because during the training, we uh, augment the joint person detector's training image with the synthetic generated uh, training images, which makes the joint person detector more robust to different imaging conditions. And this result also shows here that combining the double person detection and the single person detection together into a single mode doesn't result in a performance penalty for the fully visible people. And next, we evaluate our joint person detector on TUD crossing benchmark. There are about 1,000 annotated people, and these people are partially or even fully under the occlusion. First, we compare the performance of our double person detector with single person detector. Double person detector outperforms single person detector in terms of the recall but lose some precision. Because the double person detector treat each single person as a high, highly occluded cases and predicted two bounding boxes. And then we compare with Barry No White Oz approach. And the Z approach outperform the single performance in terms of the final, final score but lose some precision, likely because uh, their local feature is rather weak than the discriminatively trained DPM model. And finally, our joint uh, person detector outperforms all other approach by a large margin. And here are some examples. So the green dash here shows one of the two bounding boxes predicted from the double person component of the joint person detector. And you can see in our approach, we successfully de detect all the uh, occluded people in these two cases, but there are the missing recall for the other approach. In the end, we compare the performance of single person detector and joint person detector in the context of multiple people tracking, and there are the qualitative uh, comparisons. You can see the tracker based on the single person detector cannot track the people when the people is under heavy uh, occlusions. But the, uh, the tracker based on the joint person detector can track the people even in uh, very complicated cases. For example, here we have three people and the tracker based on the joint person detector can track it. And this shows that the potential of our joint person detector as a building box for the multiple people tracking by detection approach. As a conclusion, so occlusion handling is a very challenging task in computer vision because uh, often it requires the careful re reasoning about the relationships of the <coughs> subject in the scene. And we propose a detection-based approach to occlusion handling based on the observation that in the crowded street scenes, most of the people are occluded by another person. And this results in a very characteristic appearance patterns and can be expl explicitly trained and used to detect the presence of two person. And our proposed detector outperforms DPM single person detector by a large margin on our two people data set. 
For the second contribution, we propose a joint person detector, which is a joint trained single model to detect all the people in crowded street scenes. And we, uh, according to our knowledge, we achieve the best performance on TUD crossing benchmark. And we also show the potential of our joint person detector as a building box for the multiple people tracking by detection approach in the crowded street scenes. Thank you for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.